Welcome back to the little village of Amalfitano. I hope you've been liking the videos we've been making. In this video, we are going to make the Mediterranean Sea. I hope you enjoy it. Well, it took three weeks to complete this water scene, but this is not my first water scene. Previously, I made it the harbor, and that was a huge learning experience. Well, let's get started. The first step was I used Mod Podge to make the shoreline rocks look nice and glossy. So I spread the Mod Podge liberally all over the entire shoreline that I painted uh, a darker color than the original shade of the, the mountain to make it look even more wet. One of the lessons learned in making the harbor scene was that the resin used to make the water would find any single pinhole and leak. So I used Durham's water putty and filled every single crack I could find to make sure there would be no leaks. After sanding the base nice and smooth, I went back and repainted the, the base by first extending the shoreline uh, color uh, to a little further out. Uh, this, I imagine that the area it has a deep drop off, so the uh, transition between the light blue and the dark brown uh, was purposely not blended together to show the kind of uh, immediate drop off. And then I painted with a darker blue um, to, to show a transition from shallow to a little bit deeper. And to make it look even deeper, I added uh, a bluish green uh, as I got closer and closer to the edge. And this uh, started to look really nice because it was becoming very convincing. I did in the end blend some of it, especially in the deep side between the, the, do, the various greens and the darker blue. After painting, I decided to, to put in some of the vegetation like uh, grass tufts and some extra long uh, grass fibers uh, before I poured the resin. I use regular PVA glue or white glue here in the United States. I used a skewer to apply little little spots of glue where I thought the resin would probably come up to so, so that they, I had a spot to put these tufts. These tufts are made by Citadel. I said making the harbor was a big learning lesson. It was actually a big disaster because it leaked everywhere. So this time I decided to use silicone and seal every joint between the base and the wall and the, the bookcase that's on the left there. And even I went into some of the scenery to ensure no leaks would occur. One thing I wanted was little fish swimming in the seabed. So I made them out of Sculpey by shaping them and then baking them. And then I needed to figure out a way to make them look like they were swimming. So I decided to use these, the, um, the glue gun, the hot glue, and made little, uh, little strips to act as supports when I glued these dried hot glue stems to the fish and then using hot glue again to attach them to the seabed. Here, I will use a glue gun to make a little spot, then a, placing the fish with the stem already glued onto the seabed, and it quickly dried, leaving the fish looking like it was floating in the air. 
The hot glue gun made attaching the fish a very quick process. It was a simple matter of putting on, down a spot of hot glue, picking them up with a tweezer, and placing the stem end of the dried hot glue down, and now the fish looked like they were floating. To make miniature fish look realistic, I felt that they had to swim as a group, like in real life. So I placed them together instead of randomly placing them on the seabed. Next, I attach masonite to contain the resin. I use Envirotex Light for my resin. It's a simple matter of mixing equal parts uh, hardener and resin together uh, and carefully uh, following the instructions to not introduce any air bubbles and making sure that you've completely um, mixed them together. It's important that you pour one container into the next as the instructions indicate. The night before I was going to pour the resin, I had nightmares that it would leak again. So when I came to, to do the first pour, I forgot to film it. So here, what you actually are seeing is me pouring a second coat in the seabed over a already hardened first coat. So I poured this as carefully as possible, trying not to introduce um, bubbles, but it ends up unavoidable. I made sure that the resin reached all of the nooks and crannies of the scene around the boat, uh, around the steps, uh, make sure it covered all the fish. One way of getting rid of the bubbles is by blowing on it, but I find it much more effective to, to use is a little torch uh, at a low setting and just waving it over all of the bubbles. It is a quick process doing it this way. And if everything goes well, in about 12 hours, you'll have a nice, smooth, hardened surface. The next thing to do is to remove the masonite panels. After you remove the panels, one of the things that you're left with is a lip. So you have to use a knife to razor them off. So do this carefully. Don't cut yourself. Now the fun part, to make water ripples. Here I'm using Mod Podge Gloss for the ripples by first spreading the Mod Podge over the entire resin that I just was careful to make sure there was no bubbles. And now I use an airbrush to spread the Mod Podge into circular patterns like this all over. So try to make them as gentle and big, at least for GN15, they should be bigger than what you would expect for HO or N scale. Once you're happy with the pattern that you're making, let it dry and it eventually will become clear and look like very realistic water ripples. Now to make the really big waves. I decided to use DAP Ultra Clear Silicone Caulk that I found at a large do-it-yourself big box store. I put it in a caulk gun and poured out, or squeezed out, uh, a, a big dollop the size of a large spoon into the cup uh, and started, decided to do it uh, little by little because the, the caulk will get uh, dry on you rather quickly, so you want to only do a little by little. Here I'm, pr I'm putting it close to the shoreline and make big splashes, and I'm teasing it into position 
you got to keep doing this uh, over the drying time, which is about a half hour. Uh, to keep manipulating it so that uh, you get the, uh, the shape that you want. Here I'm doing one closer to the edge that is a, um, a smaller wave. And I'm first pressing it down so that uh, there's kind of a transition from flat to the wave. And then I'm pulling on it to make it taller at the front part and making it longer and make a nice and smooth little transition. Here I'm nearing the completion of the project. I am now painting white uh, caps on the waves that have already stiffened overnight. And I'm just the leading edges of all my waves. I'm kind of doing a dry brush effect on it. Uh, it's first on the very leading edge of the waves. And then after that, I, I go to some of the higher points behind the leading edge to show white foam. Uh, do this carefully and slowly. Less is more. Uh, you can always go back and add more white if it's not uh, realistic enough to you. You should look at reference photos to, to, to replicate the kind of waves that you want to have on your model railroad. This project took three weeks of evenings and weekends to get done. It was a very creative pro project, and I really enjoyed it. Um, thought I was going to dread it because of my previous harbor uh, river pouring experience that where it leaked everywhere, but there were no leaks here. The water came out really nice. The idea of embedding uh, miniature fish in here was came out to be a really good idea. It uh, adds to the realism. In the future, I might add more white to some of the waves, but for now, I'm going to enjoy it. I hope you like this video and get inspired to do your own river scene or ocean scene. Thank you for visiting the little fishing village of Amalfitana. Please consider hitting the like button and subscribing. Until next time, arrivederci.